Now, let's do something useful. We know enough Q, well, almost, to be dangerous now. Let's recall, for those of us who actually did it in our past, the newton raphson method of computing zeros of a polynomial. Basically, the idea is if you want to compute a zero of a polynomial, you take a reasonably good guess that's nearby, but whose value is not zero. You evaluate that. You compute the derivative. You take the, the tangent line. The slope of the tangent line is the derivative. You project that onto the x-axis. That's your next guess. You just keep doing that, and you will very quickly actually iterate uh, to the zero. All right? If that scared you, then ignore it. What we're going to do is we're going to have a function. Now, I'm writing this in mathematical speak. f of x, this is not q, is equal to 2 minus x squared. Well, we can't do a little superscript here, so I'll do the notation that a lot of places use. We'll make a little hat that says that's a superscript 2. So if we find the zero of this function, f of x equals 2 minus x squared, that will be the square root of 2. All right, and so if you remember newton raphson or if you didn't, you can look it up. The idea is you take the guess, you compute the value, you compute the derivative, you project the tangent line down to the axis, that's your next guess. Okay, we have the function f of x equals 2 minus x squared, and we're going to follow newton raphson We're going to project a guess, x in, onto the axis, and the way we do that is we subtract the following quotient, f of x in, This is mathematics, not q, divided by f prime of x in. All right, those are really in subscripts, but I just can't write that on the console. All right, so in our case, we would want to write a function in q that says if, I'm not going to use implicit parameters just to make it a little easier to read, if we have a guess x in, then our next guess will be x, x in, I'm simplifying the mathematics after computing the derivative. 2 minus xn star xn divided by, remember, percent is divide, the derivative 2 times xn. All right, so this is a function that says, given a guess for the zero of the polynomial 2 minus x squared, this should be the next guess. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we had an iteration operator in Q that said iterate, uh, we have one of those called slash, wouldn't it be nice if slash could also say start with a guess of 1 and iterate this until it converges? Wow, we're done. How did that happen? Well, I don't know. I mean, do we trust this? So let's change the slash to backslash. Remember, that will keep all the intermediate results. And you can see this converges very quickly. Now, we don't have a lot of decimal places here, but in fact, we can issue a Q system command, backslash uppercase P, that says show 16 decimal places on the console. They're always there. We're just going to display them now and run it again. And now you can see it actually converges very quickly to many decimal places. So you might ask, how did it know when to stop? And the answer is slash and backslash in this particular overload will continue to iterate the operation, feeding the output of one step into the input of the next step until the two of them differ by an insignificant amount, which happens to be 10 to the minus 14. Just take it from me, all right? So here is a program which computes the square root of 2 using newton raphson Can it be any easier than that? Uh, no. <laughs> you write the formula, put it in, square, in squiggly brackets, you iterate it, starting with an initial guess, and you're done. Now, I'm going to show you another interesting program that also is a useful application of the amount of Q that we already know. But to do that, I have to show you a couple more, just two, Q operations. First of all, if we have a list, here's my favorite, of course, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. The hash operator 
has many overloads, but the particular one that I want to talk about now, when you put a list on the right and you put a positive or negative integer on the left, it says retrieve that many items from the list. If you give it a positive integer, it retrieves from the front. If you retrieve a negative, if you put a negative integer, it retrieves from the back. Right? Easy enough. And we need one more operation. Suppose we have two lists, 10, 20, and we have another list, 100, 200, 300, and we want to concatenate them together. In Q, this is the comma operator. It says, join the list on the right to the end of the list on the left. All right? Easy enough. We sometimes read that join, although there are many different types of joins in, in Q. So let's have a little fun here. Let's make a function that says take the last two items of the argument that's passed, and let's, let's apply that to 1, 1. Why would I want to do that? Well, trust me, sum those last two items, remember right to left, and now catenate that back onto the argument that was passed. Now you see why I was doing this. What is this? This is the iterative step in Fibonacci. Fibonacci starts with 1, 1, and the statement of the Fibonacci sequence is take the last two items, sum them, and append it to the end of the list. Wouldn't it be nice if we had an iteration operator, uh, slash by any chance, that we could say iterate 10 times starting with 1, 1. There you go. There's the first 10 items of the Fibonacci sequence. I want you to contemplate that for a second. Here is one line of Q, not a very long line of Q, that actually computes Fibonacci. And if you look at it and contemplate it, you'll notice the zen of this. The function exactly restates the problem. If you read this function right to left, as you should read all Q, given an item in the Fibonacci sequence, take the last two items, add them, and append it to the end of the Fibonacci sequence. This is pure declarative programming. What to do? And now we say, given that that's the incremental computational step, iterate it with slash 10 times, starting with 1, 1. There is no easier or shorter way than you can compute the Fibonacci series. Now, oh, by the way, this is an often used interview question for people looking for jobs in queue.